You're watching News 9. I'm Pratipa. As we are dealing with the pandemic, COVID-19 now spreading across the country, there is a need to ensure that we have enough numbers on our hands. We have the adequate data that tells us what the situation is like on ground because that is going to help prepare the medical staff to deal with the pandemic and the outbreak. The criticism that India has received is that enough tests are not being conducted, that we are still not aware of how grave the situation is inability to properly predict the rate of the spread of the infection and how it will burden the healthcare sector seem to have been quite a major stumbling block for the policymakers. But now, researchers from the Indian Institute of Science and Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research have developed a predictive model for the spread of the disease. And they would also be joining us on this show to tell you how it is going to impact you and to tell you whether India is prepared enough this could also be a cautionary tale for the medical staff and those in power to know what the situation could be like. Uh, only 770 ventilators in all of Karnataka. Uh, the situation is quite similar in the other states as well because Karnataka is said to be better prepared than the other states. If this is a situation in Karnataka, we can only imagine what it's like in the other states. Uh, Professor Santosh, uh, you know, talking about the need of it and whether we are in stage 3 or not. According to the numbers that you have put in place, this also includes community transmission yeah as i said uh, we are assuming that uh, part of the community has already been up in affected okay and i don't want to speculate whether it's stage three or hmm. four because again, again we are trying to give uh worst case so we have to assume what if uh, the infection has already traveled hmm. while the ground evidence suggests that it's not the case Hmm. So ground evidence suggests that most likely first week our predictions will be quite off the mark. But we are happy about it. We were talking about what the projections are like in Karnataka in just week one. It could be as much as 1,000. This is uh, the top figure of how much it could go. Perhaps it would not come to this, but it's always best to be prepared for a situation like this. Uh, Professor Santosh, uh, you spoke about what's the situation like in Karnataka, but it's a study that you've conducted across the country and what the numbers could be like. Uh, if you can tell us a little more on the numbers as you saw, which are the states that are going to be worst affected? Uh, we expect if there is any surge, if there is any, and again, I would be happy to be wrong, hmm. would be uh, possible states are Maharashtra, Kerala, okay. uh, are the first one which would be affected, and one small state, Ladakh, hmm. will be affected, and then Telangana. These okay. are the states which seems to be getting affected early and again what we saw is that the surge seems if there is any surge hmm. it might happen uh, uh, with the time gap uh, professor alok kumar uh, the one question in the minds of several people especially now that we have uh, community transmission a few cases have been reported already three in karnataka already and there might be several more as well so the one question the dreaded question are we already in stage three uh so i mean our our model suggests that we are actually already on the rising of this okay. so we are already taking into account because we have crossed a certain threshold as mm. uh, professor santosh was saying uh, we should be seeing an increase mm. if it doesn't happen then it's great uh, as he said we want to err on the side of caution mm. so we want to believe that we are the model takes into account that let us say let us take the worst case. Let us say that we are already in the exponential th th phase hmm. and things are going to rise from here, just like we saw in Italy. Hmm. And we uh, we prepare for that. So so in a sense, we are we probably so our model does assume that we are already uh, in the very, very uh, quickly rising trajectory of this disease. And actually, one of the reasons I might want to just add to the last question. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons uh, we did this is we are not doing this for the government. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a very large crowdsourced movement, which is just people coming together called Caring Indians. Mm -hmm. And they got together and we realized this problem long ago, that we every country will start facing this problem of ventilator shortage, uh, et cetera. And how do we address that problem? So when this gr group, now this group is very large, so it has people from all over India, people uh, who just got together just from a crowdsourcing volunteer perspective, trying to address different problems. 
So then we said that, okay, now if you need ventilators, you need an estimate of how many ventilators, mm. how many uh, protective equipment you need for the, for the medical personnel. And that is when they asked some of us, uh, for example, me and Professor uh, Santosh, to start working on some predictive model. And when we looked at some of the numbers that are going around, some of them were a uh, bit too large. Mm. So that is why we decided to do our own prediction model. And uh, this is, that is why we are always erring on the side of caution. We, we, we hope we'll be wrong and things don't go bad at all. And thing, this disease disappears in maybe a week or two. But uh, we want to prepare for the situation that it doesn't happen. Hmm. We want to prepare for the situation that India goes the way Italy or some other country. Then what will we need? Hmm. And that's what we are trying to answer. Right. And while you spoke of ventilators, the figures in Karnataka are also quite dismal. Uh, the official figures saying that in all of Karnataka, there are 770 ventilators that are available. That's going to be extremely inadequate uh, if these numbers come true or in the next few weeks as well as the number of testing increases as well. If the numbers continue to rise, then uh, this is going to be extremely inadequate. Uh, only 770 ventilators in all of Karnataka. Uh, the situation is quite similar in the other states as well because Karnataka is said to be better prepared than the other states. If this is a situation in Karnataka, we can only imagine what it's like in the other states. Professor Santosh, if you can tell us uh, the need for this model as of now, how important it is and the key takeaways that you came up with after this model was created. Yeah, uh, so see, uh, for us, uh, two important takeaways from this model was uh, most likely, if there is any surge which is going to happen, in case it happens, and I'm hoping that I'm wrong, uh, then it will happen uh, at different states at different times. Hmm. Plus, we have an estimate on the upper side, and I insist our numbers are intended to be on the upper side so that it can be used for critical care management. Hmm. So. With that number, one can try to plan uh, what are the needs for ventilators, oxygen supply, and other things in different part of the country. And okay. looks like if we start effort now, we will be able to manage it. You know, we can't stress on it enough. These numbers have been put out of your uh, screens. These are just predict uh, predictions that have come in. Uh, these are the projections that have come in looking at what the growth has been like in other countries. In India, enough testing has not been done. So the numbers might again, not be the same as what you're can... hearing uh, from the Union Health Ministry as well on those who have been infected. Yet again, not to create panic, but it is extremely important for the health authorities to be prepared. We've seen what can happen if we are not prepared enough. We've seen in uh, several advanced countries as well the kind of impact it has had and that's the reason why uh, you can never be too careful and that's the reason why this uh, prediction is extremely important but professor uh, if you can also stress on what is the need for this predictive model at this time while there are several people who are saying that let's not spread panic this is not about panic this is about being prepared isn't it departments are concerned there has already been talk not just in Karnataka but across the country as well of lack of equipment for the medical staff as well. So these are some of the concerns that have already been put forth, which is why it's important. Uh, Professor Alok Kumar, uh, the one question in the minds of several people, especially now that we have uh, community transmission, a few cases have been reported already, three in Karnataka already, and there might be several more as well. So the one question, the dreaded question, are we already in stage three? Uh... So, I mean, our, our model suggests that we are actually already on the rising of this. Okay. So, we are already taking into account because we have crossed a certain threshold, as mm. uh, Professor Santosh was saying, uh, we should be seeing an increase. Mm. If it doesn't happen, then it's great. Uh, as he said, we want to err on the side of caution. Mm. So, we want to believe that we are, the model takes into account that let us say, let us take the worst case, let us say that we are already in the exponential the phase hmm. and things are going to rise from here just like we saw in Italy hmm. and we uh, we prepare for that so so in a sense we are we probably so our model does assume that we are already uh, in the very very uh, quickly rising trajectory of this disease